Welcome back. In this tutorial, we will use pre-designed 3D models to lay out an attractive 3D sign. You can use either Vectric VCarve or Aspire software to follow along with the tutorial. Let's open our software and making sure you're connected to the internet, click the Design and Make link located at the bottom left. This will open the Design and Make homepage. Design and Make is an excellent source for high quality 3D models that can be purchased individually, as individual projects, or as collections of related models. Best of all, when you create an account, you have access to several projects, each containing several individual 3D models that you can install for free in your Vectric software. Creating an account is free and simple. After you create your account, navigate to View Account, Free Products, and download the V3M version of the In the Magical Garden file and open the file. The models then should be automatically installed and can be accessed in the Clipart tab of your Vectric software. Now create a new file measuring 24 by 15 by 1 inch with Z0 position on the material surface, XY datum position in the center, and modeling resolution set to very high. Open the Clipart tab and select the In the Magical Garden folder within the Design and Make folder. Icons of all the downloaded content should now appear in the bottom pane of the Clipart tab. Double click the project sheet and notice that the software places it on a separate bitmap layer. We will use this bitmap layer to assist in aligning some of the 3D models to create a simple sign. Let's isolate the centrally located sign layout by first enlarging this area of the bitmap and then drawing a rectangular vector around that portion of the bitmap. Without deselecting the rectangular vector, add the bitmap to this selection by shift clicking the bitmap. Now use the crop bitmap tool to crop out the unwanted portions of the bitmap and delete the rectangle vector. Next, enlarge the cropped bitmap to fill the canvas. Double click the Hobbit door model located in the Clipart tab and move and resize the model to align it with the bitmap. Repeat the process for the garden sign number 2 model. Now that we no longer have a need for the bitmap, turn off the visibility of the bitmap layer, make sure layer 1 is active, and switch to the 3D view. Examining the 3D view, we see that a portion of the garden sign sits atop the Hobbit door. We need to correct this so that the entire Hobbit door is visible in the 3D view and only that portion of the garden sign outside the boundaries of the Hobbit door are visible. Open the modeling tool panel by clicking on the modeling tab. Before we make the correction, let's first make some adjustments to the model thickness. Double click on the door to select it. The selected model will become colorized with the red areas denoting areas of the model visible in the 3D view and the green areas denoting regions of the model not visible in the 3D view due to being buried beneath an area of a different model or models. Click the selected model again to put it in transform mode and note the small solid blue square at the bottom center of the transform box. Click the blue square to open a floating panel that can be repositioned in the workspace by placing the cursor over the panel, holding down the left mouse button, and dragging the panel to the desired location. Now click the tool that looks like a spanner wrench to open the component properties panel, whose tools perform the same operations as the same tools in the component properties panel. Note that the shape thickness is approximately 1 inch and the base height is 0 inches. The total thickness of the selected component is the sum of these two measurements. What exactly is base height? 
Think of base height being the thickness of additional base material that you can add to the bottom of the 3D model we imported, whereas the shape thickness represents the thickness of the 3D model we imported. To see this visually, change the orientation of the 3D view so that you're looking down the x-axis, then zoom in to get a closer view. Add a base height of 0.25 inches and hit the spacebar. A quarter inch of base material has been added to the bottom of the imported 3D model, effectively raising the original model vertically by a quarter of an inch and increasing the overall thickness of the component. Go back to the original orientation and notice that much less of the garden sign component is obscuring the hobbit door. Change back to the view, looking down the x-axis, and increase the shape height by a quarter of an inch. Now, only the original model has increased in thickness, without affecting the base. By using a combination of the two settings, we can optimize a component's thickness for the thickness of the material we are using, and assure an appropriate base thickness for the project. For the final settings, let's set the model thickness to 0.6 inches and the base thickness to 0.32 inches, giving an overall thickness of 0.92 inches, which is less than the thickness of the material we are using for the project. By hovering the mouse cursor over the highest point of the component, notice that the Z value located at the bottom right of the workspace is approximately 0.92 inches. Hovering the mouse over the pocketed area of the garden sign, we note a Z value of approximately 0.01 inches. This value is far too thin, so let's add 0.15 inches of base material. This allows enough thickness in the pocketed area for v-carving our text. Finally, by setting the shape height to 0.2 inches, none of the garden sign model obscures the hobbit door model. Let's add two more models to our project, but before we do, let's arrange our views horizontally by clicking on the appropriate button at the top right of the canvas. Go back to the clip art panel and add the mushroom and butterfly. Then arrange and resize the models like I'm arranging them. Switch to the 3D view and let's have a look at the size parameters of our newly added models. If we look at the models from the side, I think we should add more thickness to each, so let's add 0.25 inches of base height to each model and change the shape height of each to 0.3 inches. Examine the finished layout. As everything looks good, let's now add some text to the sign. Switch to the 2D view and select the text tool in the drawing panel. Choose the exotic 350 BDBT font, bold, center alignment, and text height 1.5 inches. Type fantasy suite with each word on its own separate line and close the tool. Now place the text appropriately. Tile the views and look at the result. As the resulting composite model looks good, let's now create the boundary vector around the sign that we need to cut out our sign from the material. After selecting all of the components, click the Create Vector Boundary tool, then select the boundary vector in the 2D view to confirm that the vector was created. Our last step is to create the toolpaths. Before we do, I'd like to point out two more items. First, 
The front-to-back arrangements of the models relative to each other in the 2D view has no effect on the 3D model. In the 2D view, the mushroom appears to be sitting on top of the hobbit door, and the base of the stem obscures a portion of the hobbit door. In the 3D view, however, the base of the stem is tucked behind the door. Keep this in mind as the 3D view represents the model that will be created after we calculate the toolpaths. In order to have the 2D view appear similar to the 3D view, simply select the mushroom in the 2D view, right click on it, and select Move to Back. Now deselect the mushroom and the 2D view should appear similar to the 3D view. Do the same thing for the sign. The second thing I want to bring to your attention are the combine modes. If you open the modeling panel, each model listed in the components section is located in level 1. If you hover the mouse cursor over the icon immediately to the right of the checkbox for any model, the info box tells you the combine mode that is currently set for that particular component. Each of our components should be automatically set to the merge mode. In order to change the mode, simply right click the icon, choose combine mode, and change to the desired mode from the drop down menu. The combine mode defines how that component will combine with any components located beneath that component. We will have a deeper look into combine modes in a later tutorial. Switching to the CAD section of the software, let's check the material setup. I will change the XY datum to the bottom left, but I won't make any other changes since everything else looks good. Next, select the 3D Roughing Toolpath tool and choose a quarter inch end mill, making sure the settings are safe and appropriate for your particular machine. In the Machining Limit Boundary section, select the model boundary with a boundary offset of 0.25 inches. Set a small machining allowance of 0.04 inches. The machining allowance leaves a small amount of material on the rough surface of the carving for the ball nose bit to smoothly remove in the finishing toolpath. Choose a Z level along the X direction with the other settings left at the default and leave the ramp box unchecked. Rename the toolpath appropriately Calculate the toolpath, and then preview the toolpath. Since the result looks good, let's create the next toolpath. Select the 3D Finishing Toolpath tool and choose an eighth inch ball nose, making certain the settings are safe and appropriate for your machine. Again, select the model boundary for the machining limit boundary, but change the boundary offset to 0.07 inches. As this offset is slightly larger than the radius of the tool, this should allow the ball nose bit to smoothly cut slightly past the model boundary. Choose a raster machining pattern set to an angle of 0 degrees. Rename the toolpath appropriately. Calculate the toolpath and preview the results. Looks great. Now select the text and create a V-carve toolpath with a start depth of 0 inches and flat depth of 0 0.05 inches. Choose a 90 degree V-bit and make sure the settings are safe and appropriate for your machine. Make sure to check the Project Toolpath onto 3D Model checkbox. Rename the toolpath appropriately. Calculate and preview the results. The final step is to cut out the sign using a Profile Toolpath. Select the boundary vector and then create a Profile Toolpath with a start depth of 0 inches and a cut depth of one inch. 
using a quarter inch end mill with safe and appropriate settings for your machine. Machine the cut on the outside of the vector with no ramps. While your setup may require tabs, for purposes of this tutorial I'll skip the tabs, rename the toolpath, then calculate them, and preview the result. Double click on the scrap material to delete it and admire the final result. I hope you enjoyed getting your feet wet with this simple 3D project. I encourage you to try your hand at using the techniques you've learned in this tutorial to practice making your own 3D composite models using the models in this project, the other free design and make projects, or some combination thereof. In upcoming videos, we will delve deeper into the 3D modeling tools, levels, and combined modes and apply what we learn to create more awesome projects. If you like this video, please support my efforts by giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to my channel, and clicking the notification bell so you can watch my next video as soon as it becomes available. See you next time.